Hey, it's Clay, CPAP MyWay, CPAPMyWay.com. Today I am here to discuss heated tubing. Uh, we get questions from our customers as well as a ton of the comments on YouTube um, about humidity, how to get the best humidity, do you need a heated tube? Uh, in many cases, you're getting one with your CPAP when you first get a CPAP, so why do you have it? Uh, could you do without it? What are the pros to it? What are some of the drawbacks to it? So I'm gonna jump into that here. If you like the info, we really appreciate the thumbs up. Uh, comment with any questions or expanding any kind of uh, experience that you might have had and uh, subscribe for more info. So let's dive right in. For today, I'm just going to show you the AirSense 11. Uh, almost all of uh, new home CPAPs, so I, I will say the most recent versions of your home CPAPs, uh, have the ability to use a heated tube. Heated tubing has been available for probably almost three generations of CPAPs now. So more than likely it is an option for you. Additionally, if you've received a CPAP recently, you probably got it with heated tubing. It's becoming a bit of a standard uh, thing for a lot of people. Uh, and that's probably because it bills a little more if you're going through insurance. So uh, keep that in mind as well, that it's gonna cost you more uh, or at least your insurance more. But it is something that comes in useful from time to time. The difference between a heated tube like this one for the AirSense 11 and a standard tube like the slimline tube is that the standard tubing always has identical ends, right? So you got soft, uh, rubbery ends on, um, on the end of a standard tube. Obviously, the standard tube doesn't have heated coils. On the heated tube, you'll notice it almost always has some sort of electrode right there. So like that one right there. Some of them even have like an independent little plug that comes off the end. But this particular one for the Air 11 has a little electrode. And then, of course, the other end of it is just that soft rubber that allows you to attach to the mask. So why would you need a heated tube? Um, heated tubes can be very effective at adding extra humidity to the air that you're breathing through your CPAP. You have to keep in mind that when your CPAP adds the humidity in a standard tube like this one here, the tube is six feet long typically. And by the time it runs from the CPAP where that excess humidity has been added all the way through that six feet to you, um, the the uh, air inside that tube may cool, which can cause condensation, excess water buildup in the tube, and obviously going to eventually start spattering on you, and that's typically called rain out. So it's literally raining inside the tube from the CPAP all the way to you. Uh, the heated tube bypasses that, right? So it keeps a constant temperature from the beginning all the way to the end, which keeps the humidity at a very premium level for you and allows you to add more humidity than you would otherwise be able to add if you were just encountering like your room's ambient conditions with a uh, with a uh, standard tube like this one here. So the top two reasons I would add a heated tube to a CPAP would be if you're experiencing a lot of dryness and you haven't been able to add enough humidity to the, uh, to the area you're breathing because you're using a standard tube. You know, these machines have a built-in hydrometer and thermometer and they're trying to balance out the uh, ability to add humidity versus your room's conditions that will only allow for so much humidity to be added. So, so when you add in the heated tube, you get around your room's ambient conditions and you can add extra humidity. The other very, very obvious reason for adding a heated tube is if you're experiencing rain out or condensation in your CPAP. So if you're getting a ton of rain out uh, or water droplets in the standard tube, it's a great idea to switch to the um, to the heated tube. All right, so what are the downsides to a heated tube? Well, first and foremost, uh, I didn't bring like a, I meant to bring a little digital scale, but I can tell you just holding these two, this heated tube is probably three or four times the weight of this uh, slim tube. As you're moving around in bed, you're going to drag the heavier tube along with you. If you don't need it, it's just extra drag on your mask, and it's going to obviously be something that could cause some leaks because it's gonna pull at the mask a little bit more than the, uh, than the standard tube would. The next reason it might be a downside is because it costs more, you know, four or five times more than a standard tube. So even if you're getting it through insurance, chances are you have a deductible uh, or you're just trying to be a responsible uh, citizen using Medicare. If you don't need a heated tube that costs five times more than the slim tube, probably not a good idea to use it. And the last thing you'll notice about the heated tubes is that they're not quite as flexible as these, uh, as these little slim tubes are. You know, these things kind of wiggle and wobble all over the place. Because these have a heated coil in there, they're much more rigid. So it does get rid of some of your ability to move around freely 
Uh, and it, it can also affect like the swivel on your mask a little bit, make things a little stiffer as far as moving from side to side with the CPAP mask. So if you're considering going without heated tubing, it is really simple to try it. The only thing you have to do is pull the heated tube off of your machine, right? So on the, on the AirSense 11 here, just give it a little pinch and pull, um, and then just hook up a standard tube. The machine itself will uh, change the settings inside where your, your humidity settings are from the heated tube options to the standard tube options on its own once you remove it. So there's nothing really to change on any of these models. And then, um, you know, play with the humidity a little bit. Uh, I would typically start your humidity somewhere in the mid range. Um, usually they're between like zero and eight. Start at like a four uh, or whatever your mid range is on your humidity setting and go up and down from there. Increase it if you're a little dry, decrease it if you're a little, uh, if you're noticing some condensation. You may find that a standard tube works great. Save yourself some money give you a lighter tube and a little more flexibility moving around in bed. So hopefully you found the information handy. I would appreciate the thumbs up if you did. If you want more info, subscribe and comment with any uh, personal experience that you've got of your own here or questions that I might could expand on. Thanks for watching.